Welcome to Take 5 from Cowie Baptist Church. We are continuing in our study through the New Testament in this portion of our readings. Uh, next week, we will delve into some of the wisdom literature, which takes in a lot of the Old Testament scriptures. We are uh, working through the book of Hebrews, and uh, we, we have uh, surveyed the letters of Paul in the New Testament. Now we are in the book of Hebrews, and our, our um, memory verse for today is Hebrews 4.12 which says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Uh, th this is a, a, a great passage on the word of God, on the Bible. And it reminds us that last week's uh, memory verse was from 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, in which it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I bring that passage back up because of its reference to being complete. This uh, completeness in being equipped is probably what uh, the author of the book of Hebrews has in mind uh, as he begins the sixth chapter uh, here in the book of Hebrews. Uh, this completeness and being equipped for the labor of love, as, as the author of Hebrews says in verse six, is, is what he has in mind when he says, um, let us go on to perfection. This is an idea of being complete in, in what God has uh, set before us to do, to accomplish within ourselves and, and before us in our manner of good works. Uh, then the author warns against backsliding. Uh, in a sense, he's saying, let's, let's press on to be uh, toward, toward perfection and being completely equipped, but let's beware of backsliding. Uh, and, but the, when he refers to this, he it does not say that uh, backsliders cannot be restored to the favor and forgiveness of God. If they are indeed Christians uh, to begin with, um, they uh, are forgivable, um, that, but they cannot be restored to service in the Lord's kingdom so long as they cling to the things which have been the source of their backsliding. Uh, we think of the... Uh, Apostle uh, Peter, uh, as Simon Peter, he, he was certainly one who did some backsliding and made some mistakes, but Jesus graciously forgave him and restored him to service. Um, we conquer by continuing in Jesus Christ. Uh, th that, that is what he, he tells us uh, in, in order to uh, be faithful in our work because God is himself faithful to us. It is his character. The writer of Hebrews encouraged Christians to be spiritually diligent throughout their lives. He urged them not to become sluggish, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Uh, this is what Hebrews, a big part of Hebrews is about. It's about uh, proving that Jesus is better than anyone and anything. Jesus is better than Abraham, better than King Melchizedek, who was referred to in chapter 7, better than the, the law and the priesthood. He, Jesus, is our great high priest, whoever makes intercession for us, and we can count on the character of Christ. We know that, as, as the author says, uh, that uh, God is a, a kind of God who will do what he says he will do. Um, for instance, you if you ask me why I believe in prayer, well, it's not because I see and I know from experience that prayer works necessarily, even though that's true. I believe in prayer because I believe in the one, Jesus Christ, who says I should pray. 
therefore uh, following his command and doing what he says and being instructed by him in prayer, uh, I pray and I find that prayer works just as Jesus says it, it does. The proof of prayer does not come from my experience. It comes because of who said to do it, Jesus Christ himself. Believing, uh, therefore, is, is seeing. Um, one person said that the book of Hebrews can be summarized by one uh, four-word statement. Jesus is the best. Uh, we, we know that um, the author of Hebrews compares and contrasts Jesus with the ancient king Melchizedek. Uh, and he does that for the purpose of showing that Jesus is the best. Um, Melchizedek, that name means king of righteousness. And this was an ancient king uh, to whom uh, Abraham even paid homage. He, he, he paid tithes to him. And uh, the book of Hebrews shows that by way of comparison, um, looking at Jesus compared to Melchizedek, we, we can draw the conclusion that the, the Christian um, can trust Jesus forever, even, and, but we cannot trust kings or our priests forever because uh, th their work is temporary. Uh, the, the Christian may exercise dominion in his life to the same degree that we are prepared to submit to the dominion of Jesus Christ in our own lives. You can have as much of Christ as you are ready to permit him to have of you. If we give him 100%, then, then he gives himself fully to us. Um, by way of contrast with King Melchizedek, the author of Hebrews points out the, the fact that Jesus is eternal. Jesus is changeless. He is, he is our unending priest on our behalf, our high priest on our behalf. Uh, we know that we are never out of Jesus's presence. We are never shut off from his resources. We are never separated from his wisdom or his peace or his truth or his presence constantly. Um, and, and in Hebrews, we see uh, the ministry of Jesus contrasted with the ministry of the, the Levitical priesthood, the priests in the Old Testament. And uh, because he talks about the, the incompleteness and weakness of the old Levitical system. Um, and the, in fact, the incompleteness and weakness of every source of help outside of Jesus Christ. As we sing it in the, the old hymn, um, all other ground is sinking sand. Uh, Jesus is superior. Um, now we, we see that in the old order, the old priesthood, the law was a temporary measure um, to, to draw us to, uh, to help us to see our need of salvation. And it was never the permanent divine intention, but in Christ the permanent has come. And, and we, we see in, in him all that we need forever. Um, you know, we often hear of the salvation that Christ provided at Calvary when he died for our sins as being uh, the, the finished salvation. It is finished, and indeed it is. But there is a continuing ministry of Christ on our behalf. It says that he ever lives to make intercession for us. Uh, and this is the work of the Savior that will go on as long as we are in need of his constant help and, and comfort and blessing. Um, and if you could actually hear Jesus praying for you, if you could hear him in the next room praying for you, I would dare say you would not fear a million enemies. Uh, but it just be, it, he is making that intercession for us in heaven, but the, the, this, the distance doesn't make any difference. Jesus is praying for you and for me. And, and that is the, the power of, that the, the author of the book of Hebrews wants us to understand. We have the forever high priest, the eternal high priest in Jesus Christ. And, and because he is always making intercession for us, uh, we 
can depend upon him at all times. I pray that uh, that this ability um, that we have, this right, this privilege to trust in Jesus Christ now and forever uh, will help us to also uh, open our lives to let him act in and through us here and now. He is the eternal high priest, Jesus Christ, who ever lives to make intercession for us.